it's funny because um, you start noticing the mistakes that you do last week. Like I said, when I did my first live, I had planned so many things and I have written down this whole like things that I wanted to do and I didn't do anything. So this today, I decided I'm not writing anything down. I'm just going to talk. And um, I noticed that I said it last week, the reason why I started at 10 and I never finish. So the reason why I started at 10 in the morning is one, I can get a break from my daughter who's two, two years old. And uh, two, it's nobody's here. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I know it's funny, but um, I run away from this type of stuff. I never, I used to be the girl that was behind the scenes, never in public, nobody knew who I was. Um, and I used to like this. I didn't, I don't like the attention, you know, um, but I guess it's 2021. I have to get used to the attention because I really believe what I have and the way I think about what everything's going on in the world of party. It's more important, my message, and to make sure we get across to as many people as possible. Like I said last week, I started posting about parties and been teaching for the past six months, but it's very hard because not many people read the lines. Uh, everybody's in a rush usually, so everybody's just used to videos. That's what I've been told. So um, that's a reason I, I didn't understand why people were, everybody was doing lives and lives and lives and lives. And now that you understand the reason behind it, I was like, okay, I got it now. I guess I have to start doing lives myself. So that's how I started doing lives. Anyway, good morning. So it is 10.02. Um, I'm going to introduce myself for the people that don't know me. My name is Jocelyn Luz, and I designed dessert stations for the past eight years, at least eight years. I actually figured out it's more than eight years that I've been doing this. Because when I started, I started for family, friends, and little by little, uh, things started changing. And I started doing, um, I left my job at the time just to design dessert stations. So basically, that's why I count only eight years, not the years before that, prior to that. And I love what I do. I love designing dessert stations. I think it's amazing that you get to choose or get a, a theme and from that theme of color of choice, you can create this whole new, like, imaginary world uh, for the people that are going to be attending the party. I, I love the kids' reactions. For me, it's like the most important thing when I see the kids, when the kids see the whole thing and they get dressed up like superheroes or princes and they walk into the party. The reactions for me, it's priceless. I always ask all my... Um, clients to send me pictures and I always check because that's that's the highlight for me it's like to see the kids reactions to everything I guess some people think this way something put some people think about money wise uh, of course we need money but I needed to pay my bills I can't just do this for free for everybody which that's re one of the reasons why I turned into a business and I started doing for um, out of my comfort zone, which was not, not my friends anymore. And it became Sweet Garden Creations. So that's why I count only eight years. But I've been doing this probably for, well, my daughter is, my oldest daughter is 20. And I remember my biggest, my, one of my first family parties that I did was for her 11th birthday, which she was, uh, what was the theme? Oh, yes, Harry Potter. She loved Harry Potter, so I did um, um, not at home, but I did at the time in a hall, like a birthday party for her, which was like one of my biggest birthday parties at the time. And from then, like everything changed. Like I started doing, like I said, for be not just families anymore and friends and became what it became today. I mean, not today, <laughs> but before COVID, I can actually say that that's what it became. So today, we're going to talk about something that it's uh, how many sweets do I need to put in my dessert station? That's probably one of the questions that it's very normal because if you're designing a dessert station, you need to know how many sweets are you going to put on the table, right? It's like a logic thing. Yes, it is a logic thing. So like I was saying last week towards when you're designing a party, 
there are a lot of things in between that you need to understand in order to take uh, place orders or talk to your vendors. Last week, I'm just going to talk a little bit like short about last week. I talk about like there's no rules when you're creating a dessert stations. Some people say, yes, you have to have desserts, you have to have cake, you have to. No, you don't. I design plenty of dessert stations without a cake. I designed plenty of dessert stations with just the cake. Yeah, it was the, like this whole beautiful setup and just the cake itself. Like actually it was just cake and um, a macaron towers. But my point is every client is different. When, it's, when you're trying to choose a design for your party and the same thing every client, it's different when you're trying to make a list of desserts. I talk about like how I had a wedding that she knew exactly about her friends and um, she knew her friends would drink her and they didn't eat a lot. And sure enough, at the end of the party, all the sweets were there. So you need to, before you get a list of the desserts that you wanna put in, in your list or in order, take those things in consideration. I can't, I can't talk, for example, like in general, how many sweets do I recommend people to do? But it's a very cultural thing. Like, and I am Brazilian. In the Brazilian community, it's normal. We do, we are used to sweets. So we actually like sweets. In the American community, I notice um, some of the sweets are too sweet. So they really not much into dessert stations. It's not everybody that's into dessert stations. That's my point. It's a very cultural thing. So you need to find out between your families, that you know your families, you know your friends, what type of guests are they? Are your friends into sweets? Are your friends not into sweets? Very important again, because now we're gonna write it down a list of the sweets that we need, okay? Let's do in general. For example, me, if you're hiring me to do a dessert station, I usually recommend five, five desserts per, per person. Like, so, uh, out of those five desserts, I like to have, that's, that's at least a minimum. In the Brazilian community, sometimes if we know um, those people are like more of a sweet, have a sweet tooth and they like desserts, we try to increase the number of sweets. And I try to balance in the dessert station. Sweets, they're not as expensive. And sweets, they are expensive the pretty ones, the nice ones, like the sugar cookies, the um, all the fancy little ones that have figurines and stuff like that, because those are actually the ones that get everybody to talk about it. Everybody gets impressed when designing a dessert stations. It's about all the details as well. It's not just about the flavors and the sweets and everything else. This, like I said, I'm talking in general because it's not like a cookie cutter, everything works the same but I'm giving you like an idea to base on it. So I would recommend at least five sweets and out of those five sweets to have at least two choices of sweets, they're different, they're beautiful. Like they're, they're something that everybody's gonna talk about. It could be just a cupcake, it could be cupcake and sugar cookies, it could be uh, cake pops and cupcakes. It's really up to you to choose what type of sweet do you want it to be like the, the the cutest one or the glamour one, the one that everybody's gonna talk about it. But we need at least five types of sweets. That's what I usually recommend everybody, right? Now, for those five types of sweets, let's see if the party, um, you have a 50 people party, right? Like a, a 50 guests on the list for the party. Actually, we're not, no, let's not even talk about it. Now, hopefully we're gonna get over this whole COVID thing and life will go back to normal. So I am gonna base on 50 people. So if we have 50 people and we have five sweets per person, we're talking about 250 sweets. Remember, those are miniature sweets. Those are like bite-sized sweets. They're not big desserts. If you wanna put big desserts on the dessert station, it's okay, but you gotta um, balance a little bit that order. It's like, now you're not gonna have like 50 cakes, you know, and the 50 different cakes, that's not how it works, which is okay. So um, let's talk about if you're doing miniature, okay? So now we have 250 sweets. Out of those 250 sweets, I asked you for at least two nice ones. So let's see, we're gonna choose um, cookies and cupcakes, right? 
Well, am I going to have 50? No. I am not asking you to have 50 sweets of sugar cookies or 50 cupcakes. It's too much. The only reason why we ordered those is just to kind of give the table that glamour that it needs, like the like fanciness to pop out, like to look good on the table. So you don't need 50 sweets. Usually I order, um, if it's a party for 50, I will do 24 cupcakes at least, and I will do at least 24 cake pops. Yes, it's almost 50 for everybody. No, I, I don't usually recommend buying one for each because it's gonna be super expensive, you know. But what we do is on the other sweets, now it's different. We're gonna have more of those, more quantity than the quality. Now, I don't mean quality as the sweets are not good. I'm talking about just the design itself. So now you can have bite-sized cute design, like cut it nicely, bite-sized brownies, or like in the Brazilian community, we do the brigadeiros, the round, round truffles. You can do cake pops that way too. You don't have to do cake pops just in the, with a stick. Uh, but we balance those. Those are the ones that we're going to ask the more, more just to make sure everybody has something to eat and to bite. Got it? So like you need to make sure when you when you're placing the order that you are going to have enough for everybody. But those are the ones that we actually get for everybody. The ones that are just the fancy ones, we really, I really just get for demonstration on the dessert station. And the reason why I do that is because cost. Again, cost, 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 cost. Because if you, for example, depending on the style of the cupcake, cupcake could be anything between a regular, a regular cupcake, I already explained it. It could be anything between like 350 and up. But now we're talking to like a design cupcake. A design cupcake could be anything from $8 to $15. Got it? That's the only reason why I don't order one for everybody. Unless you want to order and use that as a favor instead of a, like just a display on the dessert station, then you can order. But it's really up to you how much money you want to spend and how many people do you have in order to place an order for the sweets. But a five, it's a good number per person if you're talking miniature and two at least of something different. What you can do also, it's between the fives. If you want to stick to just like, oh, all right, um, I think I, I want to, Put a little bit more you can stick to the five with simple sweets and then what you can do it's out of those five sweets there are simple sweets it's very important that you make sure you have different flavors you don't want to order 250 sweets with the same flavor or just two flavors you don't want to have just brownies for example and cheesecakes on your table like the same type it's very important for you to diversify the sweets on the dessert station because everybody has a different palate. So everybody likes things different. Like I'm not too much into chocolate cupcakes, for example, and I, I am not, honestly. I, I prefer vanilla cupcake. So you gotta take in consideration that. Think about what kind of cake you're ordering. From that cake, if you already know you have a vanilla-based cupcake, uh, like cake, Okay, now uh, you can do the cupcakes your chocolate because now you have the vanilla cake for somebody who prefers white cake. And then you have the chocolate cupcakes for the people that prefers chocolate. So understanding that, it's very important. Like trying to analyze what kind of people do you have, if they eat sweets or not, and trying to break down, like how am I going to order those sweets? very 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 important again so out of the five make sure that you have um uh, 50 of each so like um not it doesn't really have to be 50. i like working with a little bit less like 30. and it really depends if there's one sweet that i know everybody loves that's the one that i ask for the most so make sure you diversify it on the dessert station make sure out of the five desserts you have at least three different flavors and be very careful when you choose too many flavors because one thing also that's very normal it's more flavors you have on the table more people are going to try to eat uh 
how do you say um the desserts like the people they love and one thing that happens a lot it's waste because by the time we open the dessert stations and everybody like it's ready we already ate supper we already had um drinks we already we are full by the time we the dessert station usually is open now we have a cake that we spend a lot of money on it and now we have desserts that we're spending on it uh so what happens is like more choices that you give for your gas some of them are just gonna take a bite and leave it there they're not gonna eat it that's another reason why i don't order a lot of desserts most of my dessert stations honestly are done for presentation because it's not cheap it's not really cheap when you're hiring a dessert stylist like me when you're hiring like a professional baker when you're hiring um of other types of vendors to set this up so i big i am very big and not wasting food so i'm always making sure that first if my clients guests are the ones that eat desserts or if my clients guests don't eat a lot of desserts very important to make those decisions it's very important for you to understand your clients so you can put those numbers in perspective and know how to place the right order for you how many sweets you need for your party okay so um basically that's it that's not a lot but it's very important so um now just laney ask me what do i do uh if i'm i am the person who wants to do one dessert for each person i'm like it's okay like i said there's no rules you determine your rules you're the one who chooses what's right for your guests you're the one who's going to pay for it i'm like if you're the kind of person that wants to make sure everybody gets one of each it's fine i said it over and over again there are no rules i'm just giving you my perspective from my point of view from designing dessert stations because i like i said it's it's very expensive when you start ordering from uh vendors and you subcontracting people like it, it's not the same as you doing a stay home party it's very different when you're doing yourself when you go into like um a regular baker or if you go into walmart to place an order for desserts it, it's very very different the prices are very 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 different one thing that you can do as well like and i done it before i explained it to my client i had this one party once and she had a $800 budget for designing the dessert stations with desserts she had no cake right so what we did is we went over the list of the guests that she has we went over to decide how what kind of sweets do we do and she told me straight up oh i i really love your work and I really want to do this dessert station more for presentation. I just want to make sure I have nice pictures. It was a bridal shower. And um, we worked together. She did a lot of stuff for the party. And we went in. Basically, she used the money for us towards setting up everything. And I picked the desserts. And I was truly honest with her. What we did is a part of that budget we used towards creating details for the tape details they were not um sugar edible like it was more like paper so it was, a, it was a lot more affordable to do it so a, a budget from that um eight hundred dollars that she had i spent using towards the paper size like i'll probably like look for pic pictures to show it to you guys afterwards um what i mean by paper is like for example the desserts that we picked for that table in order to fit on her budget, it was desserts that we purchased in Walmart. Literally, I bought like a box of donuts. I bought a few like uh, the mini cupcakes at the time. I bought like some sugar cookies. I bought a lot of simple desserts and they all came out to $60. But the difference is how you present those desserts. So understanding the uh design and being able to make things look nice and understanding the rules of perspective it's very important 
um, we are going to talk about this later on. I'm going to give you guys hints about like how to set up dessert stations because one of the biggest mistakes that I see is everybody setting up flat. That's very normal. I see that online all the time there. Like all the desserts are like straight line and it's about how to make those desserts look more appealing. You know, it's very important to do that. So what we did in this dessert station, exactly what I said, like we made those desserts look, they were super expensive and you can do that, especially now with the like parties at home and um, everybody doing small parties over here where I live, like in New Jersey, I'm from Harrison, New Jersey. Uh, we are limited to have, I believe, 10 to 15 people the most in a inside party uh, i i can't um i don't remember like for sure because i'm not doing any parties right now and i don't have any parties at home i did one a few months ago uh but it was still outside party but my point is if you're doing at home and if you want to save some money yes you absolutely can go to walmart a regular baker or you can even bake yourself the difference is you gotta understand and learn how to make those desserts look adorable and presentation is the key one trick that i get from walmart and i i will tell you like the reason why i say walmart is just because you can find it anywhere in the united states my point is like it could be shaw's it could be a uh, shop and rights any supermarket it's like when you're picking the cupcakes usually when you go to the shelves there's like cupcakes that they already have all kinds of sprinkles in it. Try to avoid cupcakes with sprinkles, sprinkles that do not match your party. That's like a one trick number one to make your desserts fit on the table. Because if you're having like, for example, a pink and white party, and then you go to Walmart and just pick any cupcakes, those cupcakes are not going to match exactly on your dessert station. So make sure you get color coordination sweets. Cause that's going to be number one to making those sweets look beautiful on your dessert station. So there is no minimum order when it comes down to uh, how much money you want to spend. But also there is, um, something that you need to take in consideration, which is like, uh, if you guys eat a lot or don't eat a lot, bottom line, that's it. So, uh, think about all those things that I said, because it's very important when you're deciding to build your own dessert station or you're hiring somebody like you need to find what kind guests do you have in order to place an order. And once you're ready to place an order, if you're doing mini desserts, I recommend average of five, and I recommend at least uh, two different fancy desserts. And like I said, those fancy desserts, you don't have to have one for each person. Believe me, you don't. It's really just to setting up the dessert station and making sure everything's going to look nice and elegant and beautiful. Okay. So it's very practical to do that. But make sure what type of guests do you have? Because... If your guest is the type of guest that eats a lot, you're going to have to kind of uh, add a little bit more desserts towards that, okay? Um, but desserts are necessary? No. No, I said it before. I did a dessert station that was just a cake. I had a request one of a dessert station that she loves donuts was a wedding and we um actually at the time I was I had I was booked but I talked to her a lot and I guide her like I help her find um this bakery here in Jersey that was awesome because she had um this wall of donuts that she could rent and all she wanted was donuts so my point is like what kind of desserts do you want on that station you know, you don't have to have uh, a little bit of everything. If you are in love with donuts and that's all you want to have on your dessert station is okay. Another cool idea for dessert stations, it's popcorn stations. You know, you don't have to have brownies, cupcakes, cake pops. It's not uh, mandatory that you have those things. It's important for you to have variety just because some people might not like chocolate. Some people might like just uh, sour sweets. Uh, everybody has different palates. So you just want to make sure you please your guests and have a little bit of everything on that dessert station. So make sure 
you do diversify placing the order of the desserts, but keep that in mind. What kind of people do you have? Always, always important. I'm always going to be talking about this over and over and over because you are the only one who knows your guests. That's the reason why I tell everybody there's no rules when you're designing a dessert station because every guest has different needs. Every party is different. For example, it's very different when you're designing a party for a child, for kids, and when you're designing parties for adults. You know, the desserts the kids like are different than the desserts the adults like. Kids love marshmallows, chocolate covered marshmallows. They love those um, Rice Krispies. They like those. Like adults usually don't have that type of palate. We're not too much into marshmallows and um, Rice Krispies. So you got to make sure you know also what kind of party you're throwing. Like the desserts are going to go according to um, if it's a kid's party, an adult party. What kind of party do you have? Adult party, we have some really cool, interesting desserts that have liquor. We can't put that on the dessert station there's for kids. So you need to understand your guests. If they eat a lot, if they eat sweets or not, if it's a party for kids or if the party's for adults, because the desserts are going to be different. Everything's going to vary on the dessert station. Very much, you know. Um, one cool thing that we do, um, we've done it before, for adults, like they do the strawberries with, um, you can do Hennessy, you can do uh, tequila rose infused with it. And adults love that. And it looks beautiful on the dessert station because those can be counted if the ones there are for designing and making it look beautiful the dessert station. Remember what I said is like, it's two of those desserts needs to be fancy and uh, three out of the five desserts can be simple desserts, you know. You do not have to have a lot. Uh, it's really up to you when you're deciding how many desserts do you have. Do you want to do at the end? But remember, if you're choosing to go on the ro road, like towards having a dessert station, and you want desserts, you, depending on the size of your table, you might need to complement with other things if you don't want a lot of desserts. You're gonna have to complement the tables with flowers or props. Props is usually like items that give the theme um, characteristic to the characteristic. Oh, I'm sorry, my Brazilian accent. Characteristic to the table. So if you're doing like an adult party, I done adult parties at home before, and um, for guys are super fun. I always used to go to like um, I chase their bar like the caveman, and I picked everything usually like to that they have to design their own dessert station on, at home. I, I done it before. I'm going to see if I can find these pictures and uh, I'm going to add it to it uh, when I'm editing this videos to put on Instagram because it's really cool because you can use bottles of like Hennessy and Jack Daniels and complement the dessert station with those bottles and create like a cool layout and it really, really, really saves you money and time and it really looks cool on it. And the same thing with kids. If you're doing a, a kid's party at home, you can use their toys as props on the dessert station. You just got to know how to organize the toys and make it look nice. Like I said, level. Do not use things level. Create layers. When you create layers on the dessert station, everything seems to be more appealing and nice. We will going to talk about that later on. Today was just really about how many sweets do I need in order to design or create my own dessert station. So keep that in mind. You need to know your guest. So you know if you need a lot of sweets or not a lot of sweets. You need to know um, if the party's for adults or children. Because like I said, kids have different palate than adults. Kids like chocolate. Kids like candy. I like mixing even candy to my dessert stations for children, you know, and so it's very important to keep that in mind. What kind of guests do you have? Who's the party for if it's for kids and adults? So this way we can place an order for the sweets. So the sweets I recommend, five sweets, two fancy ones, not a lot of the fancy ones. It's really just to give 
uh, make the table look beautiful as i said it and three um all the other ones are diversify the palettes of the gas that you have okay do not order everything just chocolate there's people that don't like chocolate so when you're throwing a party you want to make sure you have that in mind like it's not just you you know even though you love chocolate you invited 50 other people like you need to think about all those people so make sure you diversify the sweets on the dessert station and make sure you add at least two nice sweets use and abuse of papers like for example the cake topper like um not cake um cupcake toppers you know little details that you can add to the table with the same thing it's gonna help a lot on the dessert station and it's gonna save you a lot of money if you don't have or not willing to sp spend a lot of money on design cupcakes and design cake pops okay so keep that in mind uh it's if you guys have any questions or if you for example like i did get a question that was very interesting i have a bride that's getting married uh in the summer and she's doing an outside wedding so she asked me um she sent me a message about uh desserts for the summer so i am gonna probably create a live to talk about just what kind of desserts should we use when you're designing a dessert station in the summer in an outside area, okay? Because it's very important, that's that's the key to know what kind of desserts you put in each uh, table, each guest, and um, how to order that, okay? So for now, just the basics, five desserts, at least two um, cute desserts. If you can do more, better, I love it. I love details, so more details, better. The table is gonna look nicer. But basically, at least five miniature desserts, at least two types of different desserts on the dessert station. So the dessert station looks super, super, super nice. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed the tips that I've been giving to you. And um, I'll see you guys on Monday night. And I'll see you guys next Saturday. Okay. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy. Bye-bye.